Hi, Catherine Matthijs. I'm the conference chair this year for the International Association on Workplace Bullying and Harassment. I'm joined by one of our speakers today, Veron Gamboa, and uh, she is going to be, she's coming from the Philippines to talk to us in San Diego. The conference is uh, here in San Diego where I live. Uh, in September of 2022, and it's where all of the experts on workplace bullying and harassment come to talk about what they're learning, how to solve these problems, what's happening in their countries legally, um, and it's just a real wonderful exchange of information for those of us who like to nerd out on these topics. So, <laughs> um, Brad, why don't you introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about what you'll be talking about at the conference. Okay, so thank you, Catherine. Uh, I am Veronica Gamboa, and I'm currently a DBA student from the La Salle University, and I'm also a full-time faculty in the La Salle College of St. Benilde in Manila, Philippines. And my paper is entitled uh, Deliberate Indifference on Workplace Abuse and the Influence of uh, Fear of Shame and Humiliation and Self-Preservation of Leaders. Wow, this sounds very interesting. I am excited to, to hear your talk. Um, so let's talk about this deliberate indifference, um, which to me sounds like people don't, a leader may not do anything if they hear about a complaint of bullying or harassment. And is that what you're referring to when you're talking about deliberate indifference? Yes, and how, and what happens before doing nothing? Mm -hmm. What is that emotion in our or what uh, that intense emotion that happens before that and what specific behaviors do we exhibit as leaders okay so that's, that's what that's the theory that i uh develop <laughs> what so what does happen before people do nothing I, that's an interesting way to, to say it what what does happen what is that emotion <clears throat> before i respond to your question catherine let us put this in the context of fairy tales. Okay. As children, we grew up with fairy tales where the villains are the bad guys, the prince is the savior, and the princess is the one being protected or rescued. And these stories always lead to a happy ending. In real life as adults, these characters may play the same roles, but in a different arena, the workplace. Mm -hmm. The workplace setting is quite different from the fairy tale. The princess is being consistently bullied by the villain, and the villain yells at and undermines the princess frequently, while the prince does the right thing by reporting the villain to the king. When the king received the bullying incident from the prince, he had a villainish alter ego voice in his head where he told himself, this can ruin my image and reputation as king. Mm. That intense fear of being ruined led him to saying the kingdom is a safe place and bullying does not exist here. And he ended up not doing anything about the bullying incident. In the story, why did the king not do anything? The, the reputational risk made the king fearful of shame and humiliation. And when the king felt that these intense and painful emotions, this led the king to the self-preserving behavior of downplaying the negative outcome of bullying by saying, this is a safe place and bullying does not exist here. This self-preserving behavior led to deliberate indifference on workplace abuse, specifically bullying, which also makes him the villain in the story. Right. The king also showed some signs of destructive leadership behaviors where he prioritized himself, his self-interest over others, which heightened his fear of shame and humiliation and self-preserving behaviors. To end, I would like to pose a question to the audience and to everyone. Are you a leader who is a villain in someone else's story? Mm -hmm. it's, someone, it's something to think about. You know what, that is a very profound question for me in particular, because when I started working or researching bullying, it was because I had two classes in graduate school. One was ethnography and one was the dark side of communication, the class was called. And so I wanted to find a topic where I could write about 
this person at work, you know, that my situation at work that I was dealing with and um, the, my teacher for ethnography, my professor uh, posed that question to me a lot. Are you sure that, cause I, I, I don't know. So I, I like your, I like where your head's at with that question. I hadn't thought about that in a long time, but I remember she wrote that on my paper. Is there some role you play in this that kind of makes you a villain a little bit in your story, uh, your ethnographic story? So um, I have a, a, another question for you. You know, I've been reading a lot about moral courage lately and how being ethical isn't just about not doing unethical things, but it's also about stepping in when unethical things happen in front of you. Um, is So is it a moral issue that, it, I don't know, I, because the leader's feeling shame around having to address it, but is it a moral issue that they're not overcoming that shame and addressing it? <clears throat> yes, it is a moral issue because being deliberate in, deliberately indifferent to something as serious as workplace abuse. Again, we're talking about uh, physical and mental harm mm -hmm. and being deliberately indifferent is not the right thing to do. And this affect, affects someone else's life and we should be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. And as leaders, we should protect and take care of our people. Well, I'm glad you said that because I would agree. I would be concerned if you said, no, it wasn't. But it, <laughs> it does, um, it does, you know, and that's what's fascinating about these types of conversations that we're saying, although you feel shame, you've got to figure out how to get past that so that you can do the right thing. And maybe that's, you know, something we always have to do when we have to do hard things is we have to work through our emotions about it. But um I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about your presentation at the conference. Um, and uh, again, this is for the International Association on Workplace Bullying and Harassment. Um, Veronica is one of our many speakers that will be there. We have over 100 presenters and um, lots of poster presentations and workshops and symposiums and um, a networking reception and dinner. It's going to be fantastic. So um, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you in San Diego. Thank you so much, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you so much.